My name is Paul Beal from West Oak Lane, and this is everyday Philly for me. Sitting at the breakfast table one morning, he said, My oatmeal's cold. <laughs> I said, what? 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 And you can talk? He said, Yeah, 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 yeah I can talk. He said, but, but we spent all that money on you trying to find out what's wrong with you, man. Why did you say something before this? He said, Well, uh, up to now, everything's been all right. <laughs> Mr. David Langston Smurl. Yes, ma'am. Philadelphia. That's correct. Tell us, what were some of your best Philadelphia memories growing up here? Uh, well, let's see, I grew up in uh, uh, North Philadelphia. Uh, and the earliest place I remember was uh, 19th and Susquehanna, where my father and mother uh, rented a house from uh, a, a uh, black captain who was in the army at that time, uh, which is very strange, you know, there was captains and they were black, you know, I was, whoa, that's not bad, you know. We had to move from there because the captain came home, my father was trying to buy the house from him and the guy wouldn't sell it, so we had to move. And we moved to 22nd and Jefferson. Some of the good times I had in Philly was, was a place called Reynolds Hall, and then there was Town Hall, both of them on, on Broad Street, and that's where all the dances took place. If you went up on the stage where, of course, nobody was there, there was no performances going on, so the, so the, so the, so the theater itself, itself was dark. But if you went up on the stage and went behind the curtain, there was the freight elevator. And we used to take the freight elevator up to the seventh floor or the sixth floor, wherever it was. That's where all of the uh, dancing uh, things took place. And then uh, we would take the elevator up and come in through the kitchen and walk into the dance like we belonged there. You know, all the guys would just show their best steps and do their best things, you know what I mean? And when they got, when they started looking tired out on the floor, because another dude is jumping and pushing him out the way, and he was jumping. Yeah. When all of the uh, musicians came to town, they had a thing that we helped institute called the Milk Bar. And before they went down to the clubs that we couldn't go into, they would come and play a set for, for uh, the young kids in the neighborhood. And jazz was what ruled. And if you, uh, uh, majority of people you saw walking down the street, young kids, had albums under their arms. If you, if you played a tune, they'd know the tune, the solo, everybody's solo. I mean, wow. well, you know, you know, they knew all the notes of all of the solos. What years are we talking here? That's, uh, well, that had to be uh, 55, 19. 1955. <laughs> and those were probably pretty, pretty good years. Sam Comic and uh, Poet Laureate uh, of the village, a couple of years running. And uh, I came into the village doing what I loved most of all, which was reciting poetry. And I had eight, eight, eight and three quarter hours of constant recitation verbatim in my head. That I would say, okay, now. Uh, Name a poem, I'll do it. Well, how about, they try to, you know, you get me. The rhyme of the ancient mariner. 
It was an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three by thy long gray beard and glittering eye, and I wherefore stoppest thou thee? You know, I just go on, you know, now their mouths are hanging open. You know, yeah. Remarkable. Yeah, remarkable. The Invictus, uh, in this face of wrath and tears, lose but the horror of the shade, and the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how great the state, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. But Dunbar, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Familiar. Was my mainstay. This is intended. I don't care what it does. It surely beats digging. Uh, mammy, get out that frying pan. I done stole one of master's chickens. <laughs> Bill Cosby walked in one night because I was beating up all the people from it. Used to hawk your own customers. And and uh, McDougal Street is only a small street. You know, it's not that, you know, 35 steps here across the other side. Okay. Uh, but you used to stand outside the club that you worked at and hawk your own customers. Well, you better come on in and see me. You know, you know I'm good, man. And uh, I was uh, stealing a lot of customers from cars. He actually got angry. So one night I'm in there doing uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and he walks in, where's Uncle Tom? Bring him out front, let me see what he Oh, there he is, I'm on stage doing that dumb poetry. All right, okay, fine. And on the way out, he picked up a hammer off his white person's plate, took a bite and put it on another person's plate and walked out the back door. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, sort of debilitated me for a moment. You know, and it made me rethink my issues. You know, maybe I am doing that, you know? Because I'm mm -hmm. doing more black, you know what I mean? And it's in dialect. You know, uh, I had I had able to to to, to uh, uh, level the playing field because he, uh, Dunbar had written a lot of uh, uh, poetry in the English tongue. Angel, robed in spotless white, bent down and kissed the sleeping night. Night woke and blushed. The sprite was gone. Men saw the blush and called it dawn. So, so you were coming up with a lot of these guys in the same. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. James L. Jones. And, yes, we saw a picture was, with yeah, you with yeah, him yeah. earlier. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Godfrey came to Jones. But so we all came up uh, in that same thing. Now, your path with Bill Cosby would, would cross again uh, oh, yeah. many, years many years later. later. Tell us about that. Uh, well, he, uh, uh, I think he really understood that he shouldn't have done that. Yes. You know? And uh, many years later, uh, I was doing a lot of voiceovers. Your dreams are in Technicolor where luminous faces burn into your memory and emotions cut deep into your heart. You'll never want to leave this place. Turner Classic Movie. To Lois Jacobs, who was Lon Hilton Hill Jacobs' uh, sister, uh, called me and said, Smell, they're looking for writers out of the Cosby Show. So you should probably go, you know, so I want you to send me some, some of your writing and then we'll, we'll straighten, you know, I'll straight away with it to him. And maybe I said, hey, to Lois, I'll tell you what, take me out there. Let him look in my face. And uh, I don't need to submit anything. I've already done that. People stole my stuff left and right. Every time I submitted, they don't hire me, but they use my Use concepts. the work. Okay. All right, fine. So uh, she said, okay. We went out there. And I walk around, he said, hey, man, how you doing? And I said, okay, how you doing, man? He said, what are you out here for? I said, I came out to write some stuff for you, man. He said, can you do it? I said, yeah. He said, you're hard. Looks like your daughter's fond of the car. Yeah. What do you think it's worth? Well, it's hard to say. Uh... <laughs> what do you want for it? Well, I just want a fair price. I want to give you a fair price. <laughs> then we should have no problem. Okay, so what's your fair price? I don't know. What do you think is a fair price? <laughs> Uh, I, I promised uh, when I signed it I would do it for five years. I did it for exactly five years and no day and left. And then went over to Sesame Street. Just a little red fire truck. Well, it sent me on my way. Just a little red fire truck. A little red fire truck. Just a little red fire truck. Sent me, sent me on my way. Yes, it sent me on my way. Fire truck. He has 10 years left me on that show. You've gotten several awards across your career. Let's let's talk about a few of them. The Ones Award. Uh, the Ones Award was for advertising. Okay. And that was for bamboo papers. Nobody wanted to touch it. Bamboo papers roll easy and nice because bamboo papers is moving out of rice 
over 40 million packages of bamboo sold, over 1 million packages of bamboo rolled, and bamboo papers don't lose their stick em when you lick them. Now, t tell us how many, how, how many Emmys? Uh, 11. I've heard that you've done a rap album. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's not so much a rap album as it is a storytelling session. Slicks to Sam and dumb homer sat, sat on the park bench drinking a beer. Wishing for a score from behind somebody's door and wishing for a sucker to appear. Now, poor Homer Sapp, he wasn't swift at all. You know, the local dummy knew more than he knew. And only six are told the Sapp, boy, you smart as a whip. Even the dummies knew that that wasn't true. What do I like about Philly? I like the people. Uh, I like the energy because they get up every morning. Everybody gets up and goes to work. Uh, I like the fact that they keep bringing the arts through. There's a bunch of stuff here to be loved. Uh, it's just not being taken advantage of. Making sure you are not deceived by bad reports. And unfortunately, we have a newspaper system that uh, just keeps giving up bad reports. And, and it's, it, it's up to uh, everyone in this city to make a city as great as its brochure claims. Why, you can't see the blues in a suit? Are you crazy? Uh huh? I still got a tag on it. Crazy. <laughs> Something must be wrong now, people. Too many things are going right. Something must be wrong now, people. See, uh, too many things are going right. Uh, my future ex-wife up and left me. And out now, I sleep real good at night. I've always had a camera in my hands. I've always just liked to take pictures. My uh, father passed before I was born, and I only have like two pictures of him. And uh, my mom gave me a camera when I was 15. And I, and deep down, I was like, I'm going to document my entire life so one day when I have a child, they can see because I wasn't able to see. Hi, it's Cool DJ Frank, and I'm here with uh, photog one of our favorite photographers in the city of brotherly love, Janine Taddy. You did something that no other photographer in the city has ever done before, uh, let alone uh, event planners. Uh, you were able to get a whole bunch of the DJs together in one place. Can you let us know how Philadelphia DJ Day came about? I was shooting DJ XL. We were on our way back. We were passing the art museum, and he said it'd be it'd be dope to have all the DJs in one picture. And I was like, yeah, that would be cool. And I ran with it. I was like, I'm gonna get all the Philadelphia DJs in one picture. I was like a a person outside of the DJ community. So when I hit them all up, I got you know what I mean. They were more responsive to me, and, and just from being in the Philly like music scene, taking pictures and knowing people, most of the D like King Brit and Daz and Rich Medina and Quest, like they all know who I am anyway. So it was, I don't know. I, I said I want to shoot all the DJs and it just happened. I honestly feel so blessed to be around all these people, man, you know, that I grew up with. Because before we was all making money, we were out here doing it for the love. And we never knew it was going to be this big. It was a beautiful day for me. I guess um, 
what we really wanted to know uh, from you were what were some of the great things, some of the things that really worked for you, and what were maybe some of the difficulties that you had in planning the event and uh, bringing it uh, forth? Well, the great things, um, it basically put me 